how will you communicate with the audience? How long do you have? Everyone knows what is that. WIIFM. Who is the audience? What do you want them to do? What key thought do you want them to remember? How will you communicate with the audience? How long do you have? What is the context or background? And what is your relationship? So when you answer all these questions, you now have a strategy. What are the words you are going to use? How are you going to communicate? How long should you plan to do this? Do you need someone to give you an introduction? And then we can make that communication better. When you are talking to an audience, you always have to remember these five letters, W-I-I-F-M. Anyone knows what is that? W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? Whenever you talk to an audience, you have to answer the question, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? That is not you, the speaker, but from the audience point of view, what's in it for them? Because when I am talking to you, you are all thinking, what's in it for me? When I am talking to you, all of you are thinking, it ain't matamoko. So I am telling you about, you have to have, you build a strategy. Dr. Anuruddhika is thinking, it ain't matamoko, which is, what's in it for her? Why should I listen? How will this help me? How will it benefit me? So you have to always think, your audience is always thinking, what's in it for me? And you answer that question before they can even think it. So you talk of stamp collecting, before they can think, why should I collect stamps? You tell them, you know, by collecting stamps, you will get knowledge. You can sell these stamps sometimes for a lot of money. It's, you, it, you are going to increase patience, it will bring your stress levels down, it's a very calming thing. What's in it for me? If you say it in English, why do I care? Why should I care about what you are saying? So, Tarinda is saying, play the harp. What's in it for me? So, Chintaka, if you are talking to Kenyan people to come play cricket, they are thinking, why should I? Hey, Matamoko, what's in it for me? Why should I? Did you get that point? What expectations do the, does the audience have? What do they want? Now, when you come and talk, now I am trying to, as we started this program, on fear to fluency. I am trying to help you to develop your communication skills. What are expectations? To develop communication skills. <laughs> what do you want? By the time we finish today, you should walk out here, walk out of here, being more confident and being better in your verbal communication. Expectation. What do you want? I have to try to meet that. Meet those expectations. What do you want? So, what does the audience want? We discuss this, what is their attitude towards you? Relationship connected. Do they have a positive attitude or a negative attitude? First one is, does the audience have a positive or negative attitude towards me or you? Second one is, does the audience have a positive or negative attitude towards what? Your topic. Your topic. Let's say I am talking to you about, you should vote for a particular party. Let's say I have come to talk to you about voting for a particular party. Now, your attitude towards me may be good, good. But I must know what is your attitude towards this party. If I say come and vote for Vladimir Putin, I should know what do you think about Vladimir Putin, right? Or Donald Trump. I, I, let's say I want to convince you to vote for Donald Trump. I should know what is your attitude towards Donald Trump. Yeah, what is your attitude? So, that is the positive or negative attitude. Then, very important one, what are the questions they will ask? Ah, can you all write that down, please? What are the questions that your audience is going to ask you? So, there was a, there was a guy I know who is working for a garment factory and he is based in the factory in Kandy, but this garment uh, company's, uh, garment manufacturing company's head office is in Colombo. So, the CEO sits in Colombo and once a week, this guy has to come from Candy to Colombo to meet the boss 
to give him an update on what's happening. Now, I was coaching this guy and he was telling me, Sanjeev, always my boss asks me questions and I don't have the answer. And every day I get scolded, he says, why don't you know this? You should know the answer. So, what I taught him is, before coming for the meeting with the boss, write down all the possible questions the boss will ask him. So, let's say Gayan is going to meet chairman of Litro. You can think, what are the questions boss will ask? He will ask, what are the sales like? What's the profit margin like? What's the distribution numbers like? He, he will ask these things. You can think, no, what we will ask? I mean, you can think. So, you write down all the questions and get all the answers for those questions. Then when you go to meet boss, whatever question he asks, you don't have the answer, no? You have the answer, right? Whatever question he asks, you have the answer. This is, it's a small thing, right? But it makes a huge difference in how people see you. How many of you have experienced a situation where your boss has asked you a question and you didn't know the answer? Right, Vasant, you should know this, no? I am asking my team all the time. For, for, for question, you should know this. So, very easy, right? You prepare. Now, what, what happens if every answer, every question your boss asks you, you know the answer? Will he be happy with you? Every question your boss asks, you know the answer. Will you be happy with you? Yes. Now, if it's a general meeting, people are asking questions, you're giving all the answers. What are people going to think about Vasanta? What are people in, the, in that meeting going to think about Vasanth? My gosh, he is so clever. He knows everything. Now, what happens next time there is a proportion opportunity? Was Kadra then? Vasanth Tamai. But, but do, you all, do you all understand? This is a very practical thing you can do. You just have to think. What questions am I going to be asked? Now, sometimes your audience won't ask the questions, but it's in their mind. So, you have to still think. They are having this question. Therefore, I will give the answer. <laughs> Let's say then Indika was thinking, Ayo, but Sanjeev is not telling me this. No, I want to know this, but I am shy to ask the question. Now I give the answer. And Indika, ah, right, right, that's what. Ah, very good. You have to also think when you are communicating and you want to convince someone, use the language you are most comfortable in. Sometimes, if you are more comfortable in English and you try to convince someone in Sinhala, you don't get that same impact. And the other way also, if you are more comfortable in Sinhala and you try to convince someone in English, you may not get the same impact. So remember, it's not about language. It's ultimately what is the most important thing when you are communicating? What's the most important thing? Pass the message. Yes. You have to get your audience to do what you want them to do. And that is a lot about the belief that you have about yourself. What you believe is possible. So lots of companies send their staff for communication skills programs, for English language programs. But what they find is the people still don't talk at a meeting. <laughs> Because we are scared. We think I might speak and I might make a mistake. And then people might laugh. But that is nonsense. Because most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, people don't laugh. <laughs> and even if they laugh, who, the, who is the person who is laughing? The clever person or the not clever person? The not clever person. Modi Adama Inavin. Why should we be, 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 be worried? We don't have to be concerned. So there was a, a garment uh, factory I went to do some work in. And we were talking about communication skills. And then this person, this lady in HR said, Yes, Sanjeev, you are right. Because there is this one guy, his English is not good, but he gets the message across. And that's important. So in one, one meeting, let's say Chintaka is the boss. You all are the staff. Chintaka is the boss. Chintaka came and scolded the whole team. Y'all are not doing your work. You have to somehow achieve the target. You're not working enough. Y'all are lazy. Then one guy gets up and says, Guys, 
we have to be hardly working, right? We have to be hardly working. And everybody understood what he was saying. What was he trying to say? We should work hard. But his English was wrong. He said we have to be hardly working. But everybody understood because the impact. No, no, Buddhika, we have to be hardly working. The actual meaning of this is we should not work at all. <laughs> but because the way he said, everybody was clear, right? So the impact is more important than your grammar. Your impact, your body language, just as we discussed, right? 93% of the impact is coming from paraverbal and nonverbal. Matagada, do you remember paraverbal, nonverbal? So don't worry about grammar. Don't worry about am I speaking the right English or whatever. Nobody cares. What we care is, are you getting your message across? That's important, right? So what are the questions they will ask? Take that as a very important point, right? What are the questions they will ask? That is going to be so useful to you right through your career. Even you become a director, you go for a board meeting, you write down what are the questions the other directors will ask? What are the questions the shareholders will ask? What are the questions the chairman will ask? You are prepared. You can face any situation because you are thinking, what are the questions they will ask? You have the numbers there. All the numbers are there. <laughs> so you, they ask any question, you have it. And you become a star. Right? Have you seen how, how some of the people answer questions on this COPE committee and all? They were televising at one point. No? COPE committee. Anana Prasna is not the same. I have a project here. 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 I have a million siak vitra vendati. Vendati? I have a project here. I have And then obviously, you know, if they don't know the answers, it's not a wonder that the project is not on time. If you don't know the answer, you don't know where you are, no? Slightly outside the topic of communication skills, in, in your job, whatever job you are doing, you have to be an expert in your job. So anyone asks you any question about your job, you know the answer. And you shouldn't have to go back and check a report to tell the answer. You know the answer immediately. Then you are a star. You are a star. How many of you want to be a star? You want to be a star. I want to be a star. <laughs> be a star. So what is the motivation they have? Why should they do what you are asking them to do? What's in it for me? Right? Motivation. Why, 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 why should they do what you are asking them to do? So all of this is what is called audience-centered communication. Lots of times, why we become useless communicators is because we are trying to do speaker-centered communication. You think who's most important when you're communicating is you, the speaker. No, it's not you. It's the audience. So it's, when I'm teaching you what's important or who's most important is not me. It's you. I have to be always thinking about you. It's you. Audience centered communication. Always be thinking, audience is always asking questions. They're always thinking, why should I listen? What's in it for me? Why do I care? Why should I care? Audience is always thinking that, right? Then, when you're talking to the audience, do you want them just to understand what you're saying? It could be. There are some instances where it's purely informational. I'm giving you information. Right? For example, I can give you information saying 10, 30, in another 15 minutes, we will have a tea break. That's just information. I don't need to persuade you to do anything. I'm giving you information. I'm just giving you information. We will have a tea break. That's one part of communication. Or do you want your audience to think in a different way? Believe something different or do something different. In order to do that, you need to persuade them. Upeksha wants to convince people, persuade people to collect stamps. In order to do that, 
You have to get these guys to think in a different way. Stamps are great. To believe something, I will get knowledge if I collect stamps. <laughs> and finally, to do something. What is to do something? You have to get them to want to go and eat all their stamps. No, you have to get them to want to go and collect stamps. <laughs> so you have to think, you have to be aware, is it purely informational? Or do you need the audience to be persuaded to do something? So persuasion is think differently, believe differently, or do differently. Now when Vasanta comes to Dr. Anuruddhika, you have to get him to think there is a problem. You have to get him to believe if he doesn't go and see Dr. Varuna, there can be a serious problem. And then what? You have to finally get him to go and see him. So Vasanta, when are you going to go? Uh, I will go in one month's time. Please do that. You can't go in one month's time, you will be, you'll be dead. Wait, I will call Dr. Varuna now and make an appointment. Uh, Dr. Varuna, I have one of my uh, patients here, a guy called Vasanta, very stubborn, he doesn't want to come and see you. But can you see him? He has a serious problem. Uh, I think you should see him today itself, Dr. Varuna. Can you give him an appointment today? Uh, 6 o'clock? Right, 6 o'clock. I will make sure he comes. Go at 6 o'clock. Come, I will take you. <laughs> 